Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. All right. Um, I'm always fr- uh, happy to have Frank Granite here on the program. He is with an organization called CAOOY, which stands for Coalition Against Overmedicating Our Youth. That's C-A-O-O-Y dot org if you want to look it up, and I strongly suggest you do just that. Frank, how are you today, sir? I am doing great, Kevin, and, uh, you know, since you and I began this campaign many months ago, you know, we've had a uh, tremendous outpouring of people contacting us regarding the assessment process that you and I have basically uh, are warning the public that uh, the assessment process for ADHD uh, needs reform. It's what's contributing to this mental illness crisis in our country. And today we have a special guest, Kevin, because she comes to us uh, from your hometown, Detroit, Michigan, and she's a trial attorney, a civil rights trial lawyer. Uh, she boldly fought against the state of Michigan uh, when they basically took a young child's mother uh, and went to prosecute her based upon her uh, reluctance or uh, not wanting to give her daughter uh, psych- psychiatric medication. And uh, she won uh, this 10-month legal battle, and she comes again to us uh, from Detroit. Her name is Attorney Allison Fulmar. And Attorney Fulmar, thanks for being on our program today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you on the program. Yeah, I was just looking, and it looks like you're about 10 miles uh, from, or 10 minutes, actually, from where I grew up. Your offices are. Uh, I, gr- I grew up in uh, Hilton and 10 Mile uh, area in Ferndale. So uh, we're, we're yes. just down the road right from each other. Area. Yeah. Right and, and so CAO, why, uh, and the price of business, we're doing an ongoing series called The Price of ADHD Business. It's been awesome uh, with, with content both here on this show and also at usdatingreview.com. The body of articles that Frank has put together combined with our uh, audios have just been very impressive. And so we're glad to have you add to it. Uh, just seems to me, uh, you know, it just seems to me, uh, first of all, this topic is really timely, uh, that we've got a government that goes uh, simply too far when it comes on uh, the rights of parents and rights of parents when it comes to their children. And and it, you, you begin to wonder whose children they actually are at some point. I understand that each person has a right to be protected uh, by the government. Uh, but it sure gets fuzzy as to what that looks like when you hear cases like this, Allison. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, our Constitution provides that the child's first line of protection is the parent. And uh, every parent enjoys a, a constitutional fundamental right and liberty interest in the upbringing and the rearing of their children. That includes whatever medical treatment is necessary for that child, uh, absent any proven neglect or abuse. And see, that's where we muddy the waters here, because, and that's where the government overreaching comes in, because the the terminology, the legal definition of what's uh, medically uh, neglectful and or abusive has become completely watered down or non-existent. Um, and so that threshold level of being able to show that a child is in imminent um, harm um, or some life-threatening um, situation, uh, that's the only time the state can exercise its uh, compelling interest to protect the child. And even then, whatever they do, it has to be very narrowly tailored to effectuate only what is absolutely necessary. So the overreaching comes in when it's now the government uh, prescribing the course of treatment, the course of action uh, that happens to a child, and if the parent does not agree with that course of action, they essentially sit down, be quiet, we're going to tell you what we're going to do, and and we'll involve the courts, the judges, to um, enforce what we choose to do medically. Uh, These children are pushed into a pipeline of foster care, um, and it's just, it's exacerbated from there because now the child is removed from the family, um, and families need to know. Parents have got to be aware that, yes, this can happen to me. Even from a small situation where little Johnny is acting out in school, he's kicking somebody's desk, um, 
you know, the schools being quote unquote mandatory reporters make that phone call to Child Protective Services because they have deemed the child is not manageable. And the next thing you know, your child is out of hospital. And this vicious cycle, this wheel. Uh, Allison, um, Allison, I'm sorry. You got to forgive sorry. me. We, we, we've got about a nine minute interview. And so, and I know yeah. Frank and I have a ton of questions, but uh, yeah. uh, thanks for laying that stage for us. Go ahead, Frank, with your next question. And you know, Allison, you know, you and I talked earlier on, on the importance of making sure that young child, and we're talking about age two, three, four years old, where these children are automatically or you know, uh, forced into that system, if you will, of that treatment drug therapy first. So explain to our listeners, and we're going to have uh, the Marianne Godbaldo case that you won and what the significance of that is on U.S. Daily Review. We're going to have that on very soon so our listeners can uh, go to U.S. Daily Review right. for that. But explain to our listeners right now, if you're in a different state, like state of Michigan now, it's illegal for CPS or Child Protective Services to come into your home because you disagree with treatment from from your child's doctor, but why is this important? Uh, you know, if a child's on a certain ADHD med that could lead to psycho, psychoactive meds in other states. So, explain to our listeners that it's important for parents to realize what their own individual state laws. Explain it, why it, that doesn't. It's not across yes. the board, right? Yes, it is important that you check with the. Your state Department of Human Services um, has a website um, that you check with their website and understand what the uh, state policy is on um, forced drugging. Um, every state has a policy, and some states uh, indicate that Child Protective Services or Department of Human Services cannot intervene if a parent uh, chooses to not have their child on uh, a certain uh, mind-altering drug. And that drug is typically listed um, within the state's website, um, the State Department of Human Services. Also, uh, you can place a call to the Attorney General, um, and they will tell you exactly what their policy is. Um, and if you happen to be in a state where... Uh, they indicate that, yes, a, a referral can be made if a parent refuses or has stopped giving their child an antipsychotic drug or a, any other type of mind-altering drug or behavioral-altering drug, um, then uh, you, you simply need to begin to educate yourself at that point. Yeah, that's very interesting. And uh, obviously, I tell you right now, if anyone from any state uh, entity uh, is asking you about your kids, wouldn't you advise people to rather quickly uh, contact an attorney and, and uh, you know, uh, be proactive about that? Um, Ab absolutely. First of all, it's your absolute right to uh, refuse to have that conversation because I've never seen, I've, I've done these cases and won these cases all over the country. And, um, you know, you're, you're, it, on one hand, you're asserting your absolute right to not to give information uh, to a state worker. Um, and most parental rights types of um, booklets or pamphlets will tell you that's absolutely the law, you know, in terms of them investigating you. However, uh, there are consequences to that, and you need to be prepared for that as well. So, yes, I would recommend that you contact an attorney, and it, not just any attorney. This is an attorney who has to really understand the issues at hand. An attorney has to understand that this is a, um, a very troubling trend um, in our country where children are what I call medically kidnapped, um, and, and you have to be able to stand firm on your rights medically and be able to have the wherewithal to fight against an institution that uh, has a fierce monetary interest in drugging your child. Um, so, yes, I would certainly um, inform parents yeah. to start at that point. No question about it. By the way, what is your email real quick? My email is A-T-T-Y, short for attorney, A-T-T-Y, Allie, A-L-L-I-E, at gmail.com. Okay. Your listeners are more than welcome to email me whatever questions they have.
Yeah, people don't seem to realize that, that the state is in the convicting business, not in the justice business. And so when they start uh, looking into cases, uh, they've got a lot of pressure themselves to get people arrested, get people convicted. And you now live in a country where we have uh, only 5% of the world's population, but 25% of people in jail. Uh, there's something crazy about that, and, and that should make people alarmed. And so uh, the, the sensible thing for you to do is to contact attorney, really on almost any issue if you're being questioned. That's, that's my view. That's my advice to people. All right, we only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Frank, why don't you wrap it up for us? And then, Allison, we appreciate, Kevin and I appreciate the work that you have done and are continuing to do as far as fighting the battle with, you know, helping parents help their kids uh, get on the right behavioral track uh, yeah. on the legal side of this. And, uh, you know, many of our listeners should understand, like Allison is talking about, where know what your legal rights are, understand the importance of comprehensive uh, assessments before you go and put your child on any type of psychoactive or stimulant type medication and Allison's video on this particular case can be found at caoy.org as well as usdailyreview.com very soon and uh, it'll give you an insight of what you need to do to protect your children. Yeah, no question about it. Thanks so much to both of you. And, of course, you can uh, keep tra- track of Frank. And this this will be uh, not only a, on price of uh, USDailyReview.com, but an article will accompany it. So check it out. I'm Kevin Price. More after this.